All India Radio presents Morning News. Good morning. I am Meenakshi Sant. The headlines: Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address participants of Jaipur Mahakhel this afternoon. First G20 Energy Transition Working Group meeting to be held in Bengaluru today. Eastern Nagaland People's Organization withdraws its decision to boycott upcoming assembly elections in the state. US military jets shoots down Chinese spy balloon off South Carolina coast. And in football, India to take on Bangladesh in SAF under 20 women's championship in Dhaka this evening. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will address the participants of Jaipur Mahakhel today via video conferencing. Jaipur Mahakhel has been organized in Jaipur by Lok Sabha MP from Jaipur Rural Rajyavardhan Singh Rathore since 2017. The Mahakhel which is focusing on the Kabaddi competition this year started on the 12th of January on the occasion of the National Youth Day. It has witnessed the participation of more than 6400 youth and sports person from more than 450 gram panchayats municipalities and wards of all eight legislative assembly regions of Jaipur rural Lok Sabha constituency the organization of the mahakhel provides an opportunity for the youth of Jaipur to showcase their sporting talent and also motivates them to take up sports as a career option The first G20 Energy Transition Working Group meeting will be held in Bangalore today. Union Minister for Power and New and Renewable Energy R.K. Singh and Union Minister for Parliamentary Affairs Prahlad Joshi will grace the inaugural ceremony. The three-day meeting will host over 150 delegates from G20 member countries and nine special invitee guest countries. The working group will address technology gaps and low cost financing in energy transition and work out a consensus on achieving energy security, energy efficiency, low carbon transitions and universal access to clean energy. The deliberations will dwell upon the possibilities of agreements on R&D collaborations and low cost international finance towards deployment of critical technologies. It will look at a road map and action plan to improve energy efficiency by 2030 and promote bioenergy. A high-level international seminar on carbon capture, utilization and storage is organized on the sidelines of the G20 working group meeting. On Tuesday, the delegates will visit Infosys Green Building Campus and Babagada Mega Solar Park to witness India's push to a renewable sector and efforts to mitigate climate change the g20 energy transition working group meet delegates who arrived in bangalore yesterday were accorded traditional welcome by the karnataka state tourism department at the international airport nadaswara instrumentalists folk artists and yakshagara dancers welcomed them to bangalore The tourism department in the state has made elaborate arrangements for the comfortable stay of the international delegates who will not only experience Karnataka hospitality but also its cuisine, culture and heritage. The Eastern Nagaland People's Organization ENPO has withdrawn its decision to boycott the upcoming assembly elections in the state. The move comes after the request of the Union Home Ministry and subsequent assurance given by Home Minister Amit Shah to ENPO officials on the 2nd of this month. More from our correspondent. Welcoming ENPO's positive gesture in reaffirming their commitment to democratic process, Union Home Minister Amit Shah said that Prime Minister Narendra Modi has made untiring efforts to assure the people of Northeast India that the government is with them and the ENPO's move is an approval of these endeavors. The Union Home Minister also said that the decision will help in keeping the ongoing process of peace and development unhindered. Nagaland Chief Minister Nupurio also welcomed the ENPO's decision 
opposition saying that the withdrawal of ENPO's call for a boycott of the assembly elections demonstrates confidence in the government of India under the leadership of Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Amit Shah. For AIR News, Asunyo from Kohima. In Meghalay, several candidates, including Chief Minister Conrad Sangma, filed their nominations yesterday. Only three days are left for filing the papers. The scrutiny will be held on the 8th and the last day for withdrawal of candidature is the 10th of February. The state will go to polls on the 27th of this month to elect a new assembly. Our correspondent has filed this report. Kunar is seeking re-elections from South Tura, which he won after being elected as the Chief Minister of Meghalaya in the by-election for the seat in August 2018. Prior to that, he was a Member of Parliament from Tura from 2016 to 2018. Meanwhile, TMC, the main opposition party in the state, today announced the third list of its candidates for the set state assembly elections. Party announced the name of the candidates for the East Shillong constituency and changed the candidates for Pinthura Mukra and Ranikor constituencies. The party has also released the list of 40 star campaigners for the assembly elections, which include West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, her nephew Abhishek Banerjee and MPs Derek O'Brien and Mahua Moitra. With Sushil Chandra Tiwari's report, in Meghalaya, this is Chandrani Banerjee from AIR News. This is All India Radio, giving you the news. For quick news updates, run the clock. Follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will dedicate to the nation a helicopter manufacturing plant of Hindustan Aeronautics Limited HAL in Tumkuru tomorrow. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh and senior officials of the Ministry of Defence will be present on this occasion. The Greenfield Helicopter Factory, spread across the 615 acres, will manufacture the light utility helicopters. It has a heli runway, flight hangar, final assembly hangar, structural assembly hangar, air traffic control and support services. It complies fully with Industry 4.0 standard tools and techniques for its operations. Symbolic of Atma Nirbhar Bharat, this plant is to become India's largest helicopter manufacturing facility, offering one-stop solutions for helicopter repair and maintenance in the days to come. The light utility helicopter designed in India is a three-ton class, single-engine, multi-purpose utility helicopter with unique features. The HAL plant in Tumkuru will initially manufacture 30 helicopters per annum, which will be enhanced to 60 helicopters and 90 helicopters in a phased manner. Mr. Modi had laid the foundation stone of this plant in 2016. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitharaman has said that India's macroeconomic fundamentals and economic image have not been affected by the Adani Group's withdrawal of its 20,000 crore rupees follow-on public offer, FPO. Ms. Sitharaman was addressing a post-budget press conference in Mumbai. The Finance Minister said $8 billion in Forex came in the last two days alone. She cited the inflow of forex reserves to emphasize that India's reputation as a market is intact on the global scale. The foreign exchange reserve in the last two days has gone up by 8 billion. So our macroeconomic fundamentals or our economy's image, none of which has been affected. Yes, FPOs come in, the FIS come out. These fluctuations are there in every market, but the fact that we have had 8 billion come in this last few days proves that the perception about India and in its inherent strength is intact. Prime Minister Narendra Modi has expressed deep grief over the demise of the veteran singer Vani Jairam. In a tweet, Mr. Modi said, the talented Vani Jairam will be remembered for her melodious voice and rich work which covered diverse languages and reflected different emotions. He said the passing away of Vani Jairam is a major loss for the creative world. The Prime Minister expressed his condolences to her family and admirers. Popular playback singer Vani Jairam breathed her last at Chennai. <laughs>
India, France and the United Arab Emirates have agreed to establish a formal trilateral cooperation initiative with the aim of expanding cooperation in various fields of mutual interest. In this context, a phone call between the External Affairs Minister Dr. S. J. Shankar, his French counterpart Catherine Colonna and UAE's Sheikh Abdullah bin Zayed Al Nahyan was held yesterday to adopt a roadmap for the implementation of this initiative. During this call, the three sides agreed that the trilateral initiative will serve as a forum to promote the design and execution of cooperation projects in the field of energy, in the fight against climate change, and the protection of biodiversity, particularly in the Indian Ocean region. In a joint statement, the three countries said that they will explore the possibility of working with the Indian Ocean Rim Association, EORA, to pursue concrete, actionable projects on clean energy, environment and biodiversity. The three countries will also seek to ensure greater alignment of their respective economic, technological and social policies with the objectives of the Paris Agreement. The United States has shut down a Chinese spy balloon that has flown across America in the past week. Three airports were closed and airspace was shut down off the South Carolina coast as U.S. military planes targeted the object over the Atlantic Ocean. Footage showed the balloon falling into the sea after a small explosion. U.S. President Joe Biden faced intense pressure to shoot it down since it first appeared across the U.S. last week. Tracking website Flight Radar 24 showed U.S. Air Force and Coast Guard aircraft operating in the skies between Wilmington, North Carolina and Myrtle Beach. The Coast Guard had also invite, advised mariners to leave the area due to military operations that presented a significant hazard. President Biden had given the go-ahead to bring the balloon down over the Atlantic Ocean where the debris can be retrieved. In football, India will face Bangladesh and the South Asian Football Federation SAF under 20 Women's Championship in Dhaka today. Earlier, India thrashed Bhutan by 12 goals to nil in their opening match. Hosts Bangladesh and Nepal are the other teams in the tournament. All the matches are being played at the Bir Shrishta Shahid Sipahi Mustafa Kamal Stadium in Dhaka. The Asian Cricket Council, ACC, is expected to shift Asia Cup from Pakistan and decide on an alternative venue next month as BCCI Secretary Jay Shah and PCB Chairman Najam Sethi discussed the issue during a formal meeting in Bahrain yesterday. All heads of ACC member nations attended the emergent meeting, which was called off, which was called at the behest of Mr. Sethi after the continental body released its itinerary and Pakistan was not named the host for the Asia Cup. And now for a look at today's newspapers, it's over to Subhadra Ramachandran. Thank you, Meenakshi. The Finance Minister's post-budget interaction in Mumbai has been highlighted by most papers on their front pages today. Adani crash. FM says no dent in macro. Economy's image. Sebi steps in as well, reports the Indian Express. The Economic Times adds. FM on Adani Rao, regulators to take on appropriate action. The Sunday Tribune informs that the PN to open India's biggest copter production unit tomorrow, HAL eyes rupees 4 lakh crore business. Hindu reports that the income tax department is likely to start prosecuting insurance companies soon for rampant tax evasion in the commission payments made to agents while bypassing norms laid down by the insurance regulator. The Itnistan Times informs on its front page that a geological team has reached Doda in Jammu and Kashmir to evaluate cracks that emerge in Naibasti as cracks spread to several structures. With that, it's back to you, Minakshi. Thank you, Subhadra. And now, before we end, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to address participants of Jaipur Mahakhel this afternoon. First G20 Energy Transition Working Group meeting to be held in Bangalore today. Eastern Pe Nagaland People's Organization withdraws its decision to boycott upcoming assembly elections in the state. U.S. military jet shoots down Chinese spy balloon off South Carolina coast and in football, India to take on Bangladesh and SAF under-20 women's championship in Dhaka this evening. And with that, we end the morning news. Have a nice day. <laughs> 